throughout the years of playing multiple video games, I have discovered that I have a very strong attraction towards shotguns. There is just something in this playstyle that checks every possible dopamine requirement for me. Maybe it's the huge amount of damage that is possible to be achieved in a single shot. Maybe it's the fact that all of the shooting and fighting is happening right in the kissing range. Or maybe it's just because I don't have to aim. Heroes in Overwatch like Roadhog or Junker Queen must be somewhere in my top 7, strictly because their primary weapon is a shoddy. But then there is a Reaper. Reaper has two shotguns, or more, and every single one of them feels awful. Technically, it's still the same thing, but Reaper just has this repulsive aura around him that I very fittingly call cringe. Something about him or his design just makes all of my games with him pure suffering and pain. How ironic. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of forcing myself to play every single hero in this awful game one by one and then wonder why do I prefer working as a slave for a galactic corporation instead of playing another match in this shopping simulator. Everything I said in that little intro of mine is completely true. So why did I not only close the possibility to vote on what hero would you guys want me to review which a 99% chance would have avoided it all but above that, why did I brought all this pain on my own damn soul? The answer is so complicated, so complex, it would take NASA a few months just to explain the very- I just wanted to be done with all the heroes that start with the letter R. Rad. For all the playtime I spent on Reaper, I demand repair of my mental health from Blizzard in the form of a refund and a small fee of 1 million dollars. When I play this game, my ultimate goal is to have fun, but I cannot do that when a depressed man is talking about shadows, darkness and death all the time. When I walk, when I frag or when I die, in game of course. There is always a line talking about the most pessimistic and grim stuff possible. And whenever you're doing good on him, it's not that you feel cool or excited. No, of course not, why would that be? I'm playing Reaper here. The guy will laugh like he's the main character or tell me how good the killing feels. My brother in Christ, this is a video game where Roombas are evil and animals are smarter than... Then, I don't know, a s smart people. Did I have fun? No. no! Can I turn back? No. no! Then why am I doing this, ladies and gentlemen? This is a very good question. Welcome to the Reaper Review! Bravo 6, going dark. Reaper wasn't always this absolute piece of unbearable crap. Before, he even worked alongside Overwatch as Gabriel Rice. And this might come as hard to believe, but he was actually doing good things, helping around the world and shooting the bad Roombas when it was necessary. All of that changed when Miss Moira convinced him to try vaping. The man overdosed on blackberry flavor just a little bit, and that resolved in him turning into a literal ink cloud we call a Reaper. With this new super power, he started to feel a little bit unwell, causing him to experience a fraction of what an average father of four kids experiences every day. Sometime later, he meets Doomfist by a complete accident, and all it takes is Doom to open his mouth, and the Reaper bends over like a good boy and joins Talon just like that. From now on, he only believed in something that is called the Code of Violence, but I'm pretty sure it's just one of those unwritten rules in American schools. For those who somewhat care about the lore side of things, you might have noticed I skipped some segments and that's because all that was happening in that time was Reaper having a Twitter drama with Soldier76, arguing how Soldier wanted to obey the rules and be a good boy, and Reaper wanted to do things with brute force and the most primitive way possible. Here. I just shortened six blocks of text in one sentence. You happy? Anyways, Reaper, now on the Talon's side, is wearing a mask, the mask is that serves three functions. One, it hides his identity, even though everyone knows who he is. Two, it hides his disformed face for everyone around. 
most likely due to a request from his colleagues, and lastly, it looks cool. He also single-handedly cut the possible roster of playable heroes in half, because he is responsible for deaths of multiple Overwatch agents. Who knows how many great choices have been thrown out, so we could have the unholy creation that is Wife Lever. Then, the entire Sombra cinematic takes place, yada yada, Reaper kills everyone because plot armor and leaves very sad. Then, the entire Winston is somehow countering Reaper animation takes place, yeah, skip that. Oh, then he got shipped with Widowmaker to try to steal the Doomfist gauntlet, but failed miserably. What an unexpected scenario. At this point, I begin to wonder if Reaper had seen any success throughout any official animations, and to my surprise, he does achieve something. He wins a 1v1 against Old Pop Soldier, but then Anna comes in crushing the party and carrying Rifle Boy like a normal support should do, and Reaper decides it is a great idea to engage in a fist fight. Of course, he loses, because the fight is now an unfair 2v1, and they too manage to pull off his mask, discovering that Reaper is their good old friend Gabriel. But his face is so ugly, they both start to vomit on the spot, allowing Reaper to escape. Now, I'm going to pause everything and share with everyone this gem of a section in Reaper's official wiki. At Christmas, Reaper stalked his family. <laughs> Later, there is another mission. Sombra does a little trolling again. Reaper kills stuff, yada yada, the small deja vu. Then Reaper frees Doomfist, kills even more people, and ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Reaper's story. I'm just in pure disbelief how big of a KD this guy beholds lore-wise. <laughs> Here we have the strongest perk out of the entire Reaper package. The entire theme of the Dark Lord is perfectly captured in the Dark Hood and Cloak. The silver elements, especially in the second default skin, are not only medieval looking, which is a nice touch to that brutal and primitive era, where people burned witches and beheading was considered a fun event for you and your family. While on the topic of outstanding parts, his mask has to be one of the most iconic pieces of clothing in the entire game. I I know I'm saying this a lot throughout my episodes, but seriously, all the heroes in this game have something so iconic that once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Ryan and his hammer, Tracer with spiky hair, Mercy healing stick, and Reaper with his mask. Of course, we cannot miss out on tactical equipment trapped here and there that is not usable by our character in game, which is a little shame, but no worries, I'm used to this. Now, moving on to the weapons, and that's where the fun part ends. Please, someone in the comments, tell me. I'm not the only one that thinks Reaper's shotguns are utter garbage. They feel like a complete piece of crap, they look like a complete piece of crap, and there is nothing interesting going on with them, and even something as basic as sound isn't as close as Roadhog's death cannon, for example. There has to be something wrong if even a support like Baptiste has a more deadly sounding weapon than the guy that is associated with death exclusively. Like seriously, this just sounds like Granny slapping someone with her flip-flop. The reload animation, while unique, because I don't see anyone else just throwing their weapons on the floor once they run out of ammunition, or you just feel like it, feels giga lazy. All I can think of when reloading is how some weapons in Borderlands, once you reload them, your character throws them and they explode. But here, it's just so lame. And wow, I think this is the word I was looking for this entire time. Reaper's guns just feel lame. I also already gave a taste of what I think about his character in the intro section, but I'd like to emphasize how much it is a burden to play as him, especially multiple games in a row. You're not hearing anything positive or energetic when you're doing well, only emo quotes and cliche death references. The Reaper calls. Please take me to the previous episodes where I talked about Winston, the joyful and happy scientist, or even Ramatra, the vengeful and brutal Omnic leader, not Reaper, the dev guy. Traditionally concluding the design section with checking out the rest of the skin lineup, and this time we have a very wild lack of balance, where some purple skins are honestly above some legendaries, but I guess it's up to personal taste. The default skin looks good enough that using the different blue skins is an understandable choice. If you want to see Reaper as a different Teletubby, and honestly, I feel like a big missed opportunity is changing the look of Reaper's Death Blossom with different legendary skins, but I guess that takes too much creative work and we really don't want to distract the slaves that are working on the new Battle Pass content, am I right? Now I am become Death. 
the destroyer of worlds. I honestly couldn't wait for this segment, because this time I decided to first play Reaper and then write a script. This gives me the advantage of knowing I have a clip of the Torbjorn turret not dying for some reason after three shots at point blank range, and I refuse to blame it on my aim. I also have a lot of clips where there is always a Junkrat surviving on 1 HP because he just oh, outrun yeah. me, and I die shortly after, and many more awful cases like this one. Let's start with the basics though, and we'll get to the juice in a second. Just kidding, there is no juice, this character is horrible. As mentioned a moment ago, his primary weapons are two shotguns, that are bad at long range, bad at medium range, and okay at nipple connection range. I could swear that his ammunition count in reality is 6 or 5, since I run out of ammo in some very awkward moments, and it just forces me to either rave or skidowl like a coward. Those shotguns are everything you heard already, but there is also one secret attribute that I didn't mention. They are also very funny, because usually when you hear this sound, you think that you did something called a headshot, which means you did more damage than usual. But in case of Reaper, whenever I hear that sound, when I look at the enemy's health bar, they usually barely experienced a scratch. Another great pro of having my clips already pre-recorded is that I also know I have a very satisfying slow motion clip where Kiriko outplays me just because she's on a diet, and even though my crosser is in the dead center of her plank-like body, she takes little to know damage, winning her the 1v1 because support roll. Please ignore the fact that I missed one shot, I swear the rest landed. In case I do miss all of my shots and accomplish nothing, which in Reaper's case for me is like 80% of the fights I take, there's an ability called Rave Form, where you turn into a cloud and can go wherever you want without the risk of anyone harming you. This ability is great for escaping situations that are getting too spicy and it's good to give false hope to your enemies and do it a little troll. <laughs> if you really want to get to a specific place though, then there is the teleport ability that similarly to Ramatra's shield has a 20% chance of simply not registering where you want to go and making a fool out of you while you try to cast this ability jumping left and right and everyone just stares at you thinking what the heck are you trying to accomplish. I honestly just use it to get out of spawn quicker because boy let me tell you, my playstyle on Reaper involves death a lot, but mostly from my part. What I really want to say for the future Reaper players is give you a lesson I learned the hard way. Reaper is bad and boring. Not because he's just outdated or anything, but actually because if you want to play him effectively, you need to play like a coward, teleporting behind the enemy team, taking the long flanks, taking your time before you take your first shot because you need to close distance, and picking off the backline one by one. This just doesn't satisfy my needs, but if that sounds fun for you, then it's it might just happen that this guy is a perfect choice for you, but me? I'd much rather gun down anything on my way with Bastion or Orisa, or even better, launch people in the sky and frag left and right by just shooting in the general direction of the enemy team with Junkrat. But we aren't here for fun, we are talking Reaper, and what other way to disappoint even more than the ultimate Dread Boredom, I mean Death Blossom. This might be the worst ultimate ability in the game, yes, even worse than Bastion's artillery form. Not only are you unable to move at normal pace, you cannot stop your shooty tooty zone. Upon pressing Q, you slowly melt everything around you, and you might think that's super good. But what you don't know is that the effective range of this ability is close to 1 meter. There were so many situations I barely got a kill because they were getting healed or if the Lucio was capable of properly wall riding he could simply walk out of the zone with his passive healing. Above that, anyone that is already outside your death zone can freely shoot you and you can't do anything about it. So once you press Q, you are all inning in this one action, making you either a suicide bomb or making sure sure to use this ability when there is no one else from the enemies around you, so as a finisher to a teamfight or an easy 1v1. The only thing keeping you alive is not your support, that would be too easy, it's your own 
life steal passive. That is the only thing that I really like about Reaper's kit. Some percentage of damage you are doing is granted back as health points for you. This allows Reaper to stay in fights longer and keep him alive even on the front line on his own. This also gives him a way easier time doing his job, which is tongue busting. Their bigger hitboxes also mean you will gain more health per shot, which in some cases can even save your life. And I know it because I have proof this time. This passive also allows you to take on for fights in numbers, but if you play your position right and force the fight to take place in closed and cramped spaces, you can stay alive and pump out damage for longer and longer. And a nice synergy that helps you abort any risky situation is the previously mentioned rave form. All of that on paper sounds cool and stuff, but in reality it just makes you feel like a coward sewer rat. Conclusion! Conclusion. Reaper being one of the original heroes that came out on release makes him very outdated, especially knowing his kit has been barely changed with the removal of ball collection being replaced with lifesteal. He might have thrived in the 6v6 environment where he effectively countered two tank players simultaneously, but right now it's very hard to make him fit into any game. All it takes is the enemies to play Farah or Echo and voila, your game is now ruined unless you switch. This does not mean it's impossible to still do stuff and actually provide something useful for your team. It's just way harder, especially if you are constantly being targeted and getting tracked by a Farah scout. Most push maps are very open and it's difficult to accomplish anything on Reaper outside camping buildings and health packs, because as soon as you peek your stupid mask to the sunlight, the entire population of China will try to gun you down, forcing a wraith out of you or one-tapping you in the face by a cracked Widowmaker. Reaper will end up with a score of 2 blackberries out of about 34 black currants. I'm glad I gave some time to Reaper, especially that he's one of my least played heroes for obvious reasons, but I still think he isn't as enjoyable as other damage heroes like Soldier 76, Hanzo or even Torbjorn. Speaking of other heroes, make sure to let me know down in the comments what hero would you like me to review next, and I would like to use this outro as an opportunity to thank the amazing community that is forming in the underground of this channel, that is my Discord server. And you guys are truly amazing. Also, thanks for the enormous support shown after the last video, I honestly cannot wait for making more broad content, and I promise you all your favorite shiny white eyes youtuber will not disappoint. Thanks for watching, have a lovely day, bye bye.